Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining um, our meeting on anti-harassment. Uh, try to keep it as short and sweet as possible. And then at the end, we will try uh, to get any questions answered. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen with you guys to go over the presentation. There we go. Okay, so as I've mentioned again, for today's attendance, you must do one of three things. Text your name um, to me, Jean Marie, at 408-802-2227. Email your name to me, Jean Marie, at go staff.com or write your name in the chat box. Let's see. So again, um, this is Go Staff's anti-harassment training for employees in California. My name is Jean Marie Gibson. I'm our operations and HR manager, and I'm sure I've reached out to you guys um, via email and text, etc. So again, thank you so much for joining. So what we want you to be able to do after this training is be able to recognize harassment, monitor your behavior, and handle harassment situations. Harassment impacts a wide variety of things. Um, it impacts the individual being harassed, the organization, and the whole workforce. Harassment can have a big impact on an organization, including psychological effects, economic effects, backlash, loss productivity, victim blaming, loss of morale, or a poor work environment. Harassment is a form of discrimination, and it can be physical, visual, or verbal. And the definition of harassment, just so we're all on the same page, uh, is unwelcome physical, visual, or verbal conduct that creates a negative impact on working conditions and a reasonable person would find it offensive. So again, what is unlawful harassment? Verbal conduct, such as epithets, derogatory jokes or comments, slurs or unwanted sexual advances, invitations or comments because of any protected basis. Also visual conduct, such as derogatory and or sexual oriented posters, photography, cartoons, drawings or gestures because of any protected basis. It could also be physical conduct, such as assault, unwanted touching, blocking normal movement, or interfering with work because of any protected basis. Threats and demand to submit to sexual requests as a condition of continued employment or to avoid some other loss and offers of employment benefits in return for sexual favors. Here are some examples. Physical harassment, touching, impeding actions, or blocking movements. Visual harassment, leering, making sexual gestures, displaying of sexually subjective objects, pictures, cartoons, or posters, or verbal harassment, making or using derogatory comments, epithets, slurs, and jokes, graphic verbal commentary about an individual's body. Sexual harassment is unwanted sexual advances Again, visual, verbal, or physical conduct of a sexual nature. It also includes gender-based harassment of a person of the same sex. For example, Jim keeps asking his coworker Lisa out and she constantly says no. One thing that I think a lot of people are familiar with is quid pro quo, which is this for that. When someone is in a position of power requires a sexual favor or submission to sexual conduct from someone else by making it a basis for employment decisions. For example, Mark is an employee. His boss, Tara, offered him a promotion if he went out with her. Again, another example, quid pro quo, when submission to or rejection of sexual conduct 
is used as a basis for making employment decisions such as promotions, pay increases, hiring, or firing. Again, quid pro quo, which pretty much means this for that. I will hire you, I will promote you, I will recommend you for this position. You will dot, dot, dot. So here is a short video. I am going to share my sound with you guys um, on um, quid pro quo harassment. I'm not sure I'd illustrate the data that way, Julio. Have you considered using bar graphs? No, but I guess I could. Good, because you want to make it easier for the reader to see trends over time. That makes sense, I guess. That's what I like about you, Julio. You are always open to new possibilities. I've always said you have tremendous potential. And with the right coaching, I know we could get you promoted to my assistant. That sounds great. What, what do you mean by coaching? Julio, I respect you, so I'm gonna be honest. You would be even more effective if you expressed yourself more confidently. More confidently? <laughs> exactly, and I think I have a plan. A plan? Yes, I know I can help you with this, but because I'm your boss, I'm not sure that we should spend a lot of time together at work. I don't want people to think that you have performance issues. So, I think it would be best for me to offer you coaching off-site. I'm not sure I understand. We could have dinner together once a week or so, and we could talk about your communication style and what it would take to get you promoted. I've learned some important lessons along the way, and I'd be happy to teach you how things work as you move up the ladder. But I, I'm not sure I feel comfortable with that. Couldn't you just give me advice here in the office? I'd hate to embarrass you like that. What if people found out I was concerned about your abilities? But I'm not sure my wife would like me having dinner with you like that. <laughs> oh, Julio, I thought you were management material. Career advancement sometimes requires sacrifices. Well, I'm not saying I'm not interested. It's just... Look, I like you. I see opportunities for you. But if you're not willing to invest the time in making a promotion a possibility, then I'll focus my sights on someone else. Okay, great. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, so as you can tell, this was an example of quid pro quo harassment. Um, if you do this, go to dinner with me, um, then I will promote you or work with you on getting promoted. So this for that. Oops, let's see. No, oh, sorry about that. Okay, here we go. So there's also uh, forms of harassment that are non-sexual. So unwanted non-sexual conduct of a visual, verbal, and physical nature that negatively affects working conditions and targets protected classes. Protected classes can include race, color, national origin, ancestry, religion, sex, pregnancy, age over 40, medical conditions, status as a victim of domestic violence, marital status, genetic info, sexual orientation, gender identity, gender expression, AIDS or HIV, military or veteran status, disabilities, or political activities. One example is Bill is excluded from team building event activities because he's 45. So he's excluded from team building because he is 45. So this falls under the protected classes of age over 40. And it is unwanted non-sexual conduct that would negatively affect his working conditions and target the protected class of age over 40.
there's also hostile work environments. So this is behavior, either sexual or non-sexual, that interferes with a person's job performance or that creates an intimidating or offensive work environment. A single incident of harassing behavior is illegal if the behavior is intimidating, hostile, offensive, or unreasonably interferes with another person's job function. So you always wanna think is, would a reasonable person take offense to it? So for example, Frank has been with the company for 10 years. Due to a recent health condition, he needs a wheelchair. People in the office joke and call him wheels. This is a form of harassment. Here is another video. Let's see, I wanna share with you guys. Perfect. There we go. So will I see you at that three o'clock? Yeah, I'll be there. Oh, you got um got it. I haven't had sex in a month. Well, What school did you go to? Arizona State. I didn't know they had hot girls at ASU. You see the way he's dressed today? Oh yeah. What's that thing? Spray painted on? I don't want to spray paint on. They promoted her? Mm-hmm. I know five guys more qualified than that. Only five. So some other examples, um, pregnancy, maybe making fun of someone because they're pregnant or their stomach is shaped weird, national origin, teasing someone about where they're from, marital status, teasing someone because they're single or teasing them because they're married, ancestry, calling someone, uh, one example I read about when I was doing another training was uh, someone calling someone Pocahontas for being Native American or a political Someone that is pro-choice is ridiculed for their beliefs. Or a military example I read about. Someone that was honorably discharged was being told they let their country down. I also talked in one of the previous slides about gender. So just a few definitions on gender. Gender identity. This refers to the gender the person identifies with. So regardless of if you were born male or female, it's the gender the person identifies with. So for example, um, I was born female, but I may identify with male. So my gender identity would be male, even though I was born female. Or gender expression. This refers to an individual gender-related appearance or behavior, regardless of it corresponding with their sex at birth. So for example, someone may have been born a male, but decides in appearance or behavior to act as a woman. Their gen, that would be their gender expression. There's also sexual orientation. So that's what gender someone is sexually attracted to. And an interesting fact, I found 90% of transgender and non-binary people reported experience from harassment or discrimination at work. So here's a couple examples. Um, Sally prefers to be called she. However, based on her appearance, people say he or it as a joke. Or Felicia works at a manufacturing plant and doesn't wear makeup and has a shaved head. People make comments like you should wear makeup or you'll never get a date looking like that. Obviously those are unacceptable and are forms of harassment. So here's a couple gender guidelines to be aware of. Don't force your opinions or expectations about gender on anyone. Avoid assumptions and stereotyping. Be conscientious and respectful. 
protected classes. There may be additional protected classes in our state. I think for the most part though, everything that I mentioned on the previous slide is all of them. Um, but just a couple of few um, examples. Francisco mentions that he likes to go to drag shows to support his friends. People who were uncomfortable with this then started harassing him. Or Freddie is teased about being short. Height isn't a protected class, but it could be associated with a medical disability. So you just need to be really careful when making jokes. There's also third party harassment. This is harassment com committed by any harasser that is not an employee at um, your organization. So maybe like a contractor or a client, or maybe you're working with company A and they work with company B. One example is a delivery man delivering supplies flirts with the receptionist. His comments make her uncomfortable. This is harassment. There's a little more information on third party um, employee harassment. An employee, employer becomes liable for unlawful harassment between the third parties, for example, clients or vendors, and employees when it knows or should have known of the conduct and fails to take immediate and appropriate action. So here's a couple of third party situations. In Las Vegas, supervisors witness customers calling various employees, which were casino dealers, effing bees over a period of years. Or in Virginia, a female nurse was sexually harassed by a male patient. Or in Texas, a Walmart customer said to a store employee, I know you ain't leaving. I know you're here to stay. Y'all should go back to your own countries and fix up your own countries. Again, these are examples of third party situations. There's also secondhand harassment. So harassment isn't always direct from one person to another. If you overhear harassment, this could be secondhand harassment. So for example, you hear someone calling another employee grandpa or old man. Another employee of the same age hears the comments and it makes her uncomfortable. This is secondhand harassment. There's also offsite harassment. I did not go into this too much because I don't feel like we have much offsite um, travel going on, etc. But this is more if you're traveling on business, it can occur during um, you know, on the airplane or whatever the mode of transportation is, in a hotel room, um, during dinner, etc. But this is not at the work site, it would be off-site harassment doing work-related activities. So what do you think is behind harassment? A lot of times it's insecurity, jealousy, fear, and lack of knowledge. So how do you prevent harassment? Monitor your behavior and think about how your actions affect others. Don't make jokes about people in protected classes. It may seem innocent to you, but not to others. Think before you act. If you offend someone, apologize immediately and let them know it won't happen again. What should you do if you witness harassment? That's called bystander intervention. Report what you saw. Speak up. Tell the harasser to stop it. You can make a difference. And don't gossip about the situation because that never helps. Who can you go to if you are harassed? You can go to your supervisor on the job site or in the office. You can go to someone else in the management role. You could go to your recruiter at Go staff, or you could come to me as HR. What are the potential effects of being harassed? Feeling powerless or helpless? Shame or guilt? Depression? feeling betrayed and or violated, fatigue or loss of motivation, difficulty concentrating or loss of self-confidence. Retaliation is illegal. If you are subjected to retaliation, speak to someone in management. When responding to harassment, you can confront your harasser, report it, and make sure to write down all the details. There's also a work, abusive workplace conduct. This can lead to loss of productivity, high turnover, and lower company morale. You have the right to a safe, abuse-free workplace. So what is abusive conduct? It's repeated or severe inflection of verbal or physical conduct 
that a reasonable person would find threatening, intimidating, or humiliating. Sabotages or undermines work performance and repeated behavior is defined as happens more than once unless severely egregious. Toxic environments aren't directed at anyone in particular, and that would be such as throwing things, pounding a desk, or tossing papers. There's also personal verbal attacks, such as shouting, ridiculing, or private life jokes, undermining work performance, such as impossible deadlines or unnecessary disruptions, intimidation and violence, such as finger wagging, unwanted physical contact, throwing objects or making threats. There's also social sabotage, such as belittling them, ridiculing, isolating, spreading rumors, yelling, or interrupting. These are not abusive. High stress jobs, high standards, social relationships or bantering or teasing. Think more like sports teams. You know, my team's better. No, my team's better. Also a minor isolated incident, maybe a single inappropriate remark. A pat on the back, as long as you haven't before said that that's unwelcome. Or performance improvement plans if someone is struggling or a disagreement between coworkers. If you feel you are being harassed, document the details. Write down who, what, when, any witnesses, any evidence, et cetera, and then speak to a manager or HR. Again, some things to remember, don't get caught up in gossip. Stick up for people who are being harassed. Handle conflicts appropriately and communicate with management. If you see something, say something. Uh, Ghost has anti-harassment policy. We do not tolerate harassment. We are committed to investigating claims and protecting our employees. Please see the handbook for a specific anti-harassment policy for reporting options. You can have immediate measures, an investigation, interview, possible corrective measures, and possible remedies. The NLRA can assist you or you can seek help outside the organization with the EEOC. So again, just a few behavioral guidelines slash takeaways. Understand people come from different backgrounds and might interpret workplace interactions in a wide variety of ways. Identify workplace behaviors that may constitute discrimination, harassment, or retaliation and head it off at the pass. Again, see something, say something. Know the company's policies and when in doubt, report it. And most importantly, just be a good human. I'm going to stop sharing my screen with you guys. Let's see. I think there we go. And let's see if we have any questions in the chat box. Okay, perfect. So one question is, where can I find the handbook? Um, that's a great question. The handbook is in the employee portal. When you log in and you have, um, it's where you do your time entry at. There is a section up at the top, I believe this says documents and your handbook can be found there. Let's see if there is anything more. Okay, no, it doesn't look like there are any more questions. Um, so what I'm gonna do again real quick is share my screen with you guys um, to show you um, my cell phone um, number to text me or the um, email address, et cetera. So let me get back to my screen. Let's see. Okay, perfect. So again, text your name to me or email your name to me or write your name in the chat box. And thank you guys so much for attending. Um, I'm gonna give you guys a few minutes to write your name in that chat box for me.